Hey everyone, Mango Seminole here. How are we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic 7. This is going to be the developer notes. I didn't want to mishmash this into the patch notes because uh, two separate things and they both deserve kind of their own little chat. So I'm just going to read this off, to be honest. Uh, a lot of people like me reading them patch notes, whatever, whatever floats your boat. And then we'll talk about it after. So the first thing we're going to um, talk about is the publishing joint venture with Yostar. So it says, at the event in Japan last Saturday, Yostar announced their joint publishing of the Japanese service of E7 alongside Smilegate. E7 received attention from a number of J JP publishers, but Yostar deeply impressed us with their broad understanding of the game and commitment to providing the best service to our heirs. It is our honor to work alongside such a distinguished publisher, especially one with a record of successfully servicing popular games such as Azure Lane in Japan. We are currently considering the possibility of a new Japanese server within the same build as the current servers, along with a JP translation and voice acting. Yay! Um, in this vein, we are working hard to cast JP voice actors, which we know many of you have been anticipating. And heirs will be able to change their media pack in order to freely enjoy HQ JP VAs themselves. Heck yes. And please understand that we are unable to provide uh, an exact time for the JP launch. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, that's so exciting. So a lot of people have been kind of wondering where the JP server is. Like in all honesty, if your game is popular and it's not in Japan, what are you doing, right? Like get it to Japan, get their money and let's go. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, it says it here, but Yostar is who is running Azure Lane right now. I think the North American version, I may be wrong, but they have done a tremendous job. Um, the best part about Azure Lane was just their community team and Yostar themselves. They were so fantastic. Um, everything was ran great. The um, ev Everything was awesome. Like, super awesome. I I'm super a big fan of Yostar, so that is great. If it is my understanding, like the server I played on those people that did run that one, I think it is, but I might be wrong. Um, also, Epic Seven's first collab planned for April 25th. And for those of you who do not know what else comes out on April 25th, it is Persona. Yeah, Persona um, Royal comes out on April 25th, or not comes out, but we get a lot of information out on the 25th. Now, um, keep in mind that is the 25th in North America, and I believe this April 25th is in Korea, so it's a different time than our 25th. So maybe it's not that, there's a good chance it isn't, but I think um, the chance of it actually being Persona has jumped up dramatically. I think it fits in our world perfectly too. Um, so let's read about this now. It says, we are very grateful for the amount of interest that Airs have shown in the collab since it was first announced. We hope that Airs understanding in the cult Consultation between the IPs, developers, and publishers is very important, and thus we are unable to provide too many details in advance. Yep. Um, that's why we are all more excited to reveal the collab as planned for the 25th. Again, we kindly ask for your understanding that we cannot yet disclose what it is. Um, what we can tell you, however, is that we are working with an IP that will suit our game well, featuring heroes with impressive effects and animations, and progress so far is very promising. So, like, this just screams Persona to me. Like, if you've not seen a lot of the cutscenes and everything. A lot of them are held in schools. There's headphones. Um, the animations are just like it. The the day to day life we have, the story, the relationships between characters, the dating sim we had, everything just makes so much sense for it to be Persona. I'm sure it's not going to be, but if it is, it just perfect sense and they can fit things in great. Also worth noting, having a connection to Earth is huge. Also worth noting the Chaos Gates look very similar to a lot of Persona monsters, so everything just kind of makes sense to me. Um, so it says, in order to present a collab most fitting for E7, we will have an extensive four-week long side story. The side story will contain its own special elements to distinguish it from other side stories, similar to the branching storytelling of the So the Roses May Bloom, which is the um, Choose Your Own Adventure, Adventure Waifu Simulator, which makes a lot of sense with Persona in mind, and the defense stages of eulogy for a saint. This unique feature of this particular side story will be the tournament stage. Okay, so tournament stage, I'm not sure what that could mean. Event currencies earned through the side story can be used as entry tickets for the tournament, where players will be able to challenge a number of NPCs beginning with a round of 16. Those who emerge victorious from this tournament will be able to receive valuable items such as Molagora as well as a 5-star collab hero. 
hype to that and their accompanying artifact. As long as you continue playing the side story, you'll be able to receive this hero and their artifact through various methods, including quest rewards. Outside of this, we also have plans for two other limited heroes and accompanying artifacts. Wow, so that's a lot of heroes. Finally, we are also preparing a variety of events to commemorate E7's first ever collab, including a special check-in event. Okay, so we are getting two limited banners by the sounds of things, which means I will need approximately a butt-ton of Skystones to triple S them both. And um, if it is, if it is Persona, I will be triple Sing them both, just, just as a heads up. I don't care who they are, unless it's somebody super stupid. Like, I can't even think of who I don't like in Persona. Um, but I feel like I'm triple Sing, whatever it is. I've got a lot of Skystones now, as long as Isaria doesn't take a lot of them. So, um, no, no, the wrong button. Mango, the wrong button. The back, yeah, here we go. So they're also mentioning um, drop rate increases banners for popular heroes. It says, popular heroes from the previous season have been given increased drop rates alongside the launch of Arena Season 2. First banner was Crown Tenebria, which is followed by a second banner of um, on April 11th and a third on April 18th. Okay, so there's another one coming in eight days or so. So I'm not sure what that one is. I'm not sure if it says. Um, there are several reasons why we decided to run ban banners of popular established heroes instead of new ones. As new heroes continue to be released, the opportunity to summon the already existing heroes that you want continues to decrease. We believe that being able to play Epic 7 with your favorite and most beloved heroes create a more special experience. Therefore, we have to consider the possibility of increasing drop rates of existing heroes for a long time. In addition to this, there have also been some players who are feeling fatigued by the need to summon and build new heroes every two weeks. That's kind of cool. We've been very cautious since this is our first time holding increased drop rate banners for existing rather than new heroes, but we hope, hope the chance to introduce added variety into your teams through already established heroes will provide heirs with more fun. We are working towards developing the visual content of E7 even further to introduce new and varied experiences, whether it be new connection heroes hype, heroes obtained only through Guild Wars hype, hero skins, Double, triple hype, new and colossal monsters, quadruple hype, and even cute little pets! <laughs> Why would they just sneak all this in one line? They're like, here's a bunch of not so meaningful information. Bam! Everything at once. This is this is the good. This is the good line right here. Um, hero skins. This is something I was never sure if they would do. Um, honestly, just because everything is so well done in this game, to get a hero skin in this game is actually massive. And I cannot see them giving a hero a skin without actually changing their special animation too. Um, and without giving them new voices. So this is why I really, 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 really feel like these are going to be done well. And they're going to be expensive too. So I'm, I'm really excited for these. And I hope this is the way they go instead of the artifact selling pack and the, the equipment selling pack. Wow, okay. So that's that's exciting. Um, skins, Colossus, monsters, cute little pets. Ha! I'm so excited. I also forgot to mention, I just wanted to talk about pets just a little bit longer because they are so important to me. Um, I honestly think pets are going to be kind of like they were in Final Blade. So if you've played Final Blade, there is a pack you can buy once a month called the Fairy Pack. This pack costs about five bucks. Um, and I just picked stuff up for you along the stage. It's pretty much a must buy. Like you have to buy it in that game to really compete. It's only four bucks a month. It was like a monthly subscription. And I think they're going to do something like that here. Although I don't think it'll be as dramatic. So what I expect is just um, having a little dude or dudette or whatever gender or whatever type of animal your pet is on the screen. And they're just going to wander around and open up chests for you. Um, I don't think they're going to be much more than that. I think maybe they'll have effects for the labyrinth. So for example, um, something really cool we could see is a pet could have like 10% more damage dealt in the lab or 10% less um, morale used or um, a pet could add to morale during camping because you could pet them or something like that. There's so many different options. Um, people were wanting me to mention if I think they're going to be pay to win or not. I, I, I'm hoping they're not stat related and I hope um, it's just like a skin you can put on them. Like you can skin it to whatever you want and we get the bonuses elsewhere. But I guess we'll see uh, in the future. They're definitely going to open chests for us though and click shrines and everything. Um, so yeah, back to our schedule here.
Anyways, that's about it for today. Let me know in the comments below what you think this collab is. Do you have any ideas, any thoughts? Do you hope it's Persona? If it's Persona, which three characters might we get? I imagine we get a main character. I also imagine we would get um, somebody like On. Um, I also imagine we would get, I don't even know who else, Morgana? That would be so weird though. Anyways, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later. Bye!